Welcome to another episode of GUI Challenges, where I build interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to build it your way. Because with our creative minds combined, we're going to find multiple ways to solve these interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills. And in today's GUI Challenge, we are building split text animations. We're going to split by letter, and we're going to split by word. And why don't you cue in that intro? Ah, uh, the debugging corner. So nice. I have each of our examples. I made four examples out of this technique today. And this first one is an animated letter example. You can see it's an infinite animation and I just love highlighting this. It's so cool. The browser's like, oh, did you highlight text? Let me just scale that highlight with it for you for free. It looks really cool. We could even go apply that to our animation if we wanted to. It's all CSS driven at the end of the day. Over here is the same thing, split letters, but we've made it so that you have to hover on them to interact with them. Uh, and I like that the hovering on the whole space pushed the entire container of text back, but the one that you hover on uh, comes back to the front. And it just makes this really nice like double interaction effect. And I just really like, I don't know, pushing things away is a really cool way to bring something into focus, right? Down here is a split word animation, right? We split a paragraph of content into multiple words, and now we're animating each of those infinitely with some keyframes. And then over here, we have another transitional focused split word animation. There's a couple of things worth noting though in here. I'm gonna open up the dev tools, go to the rendering tab, and I'm gonna go and reduce the motion. And notice the animation stops here, but that's not really the important part. So I'm gonna reload the page and inspect these elements here. And notice it's an H1 with some text in it. That's legible content. If I go back to render rendering and I set this to no emulation and I reload it, uh, they're all spans. So that's not really content that's sort of ready for everyone. And so I'm kind of gating this um, DOM manipulation behind a client side JavaScript check as well as some CSS checks, right? So I'm going to make sure that uh, animation and motion is okay. I'm also going to make sure that the device is capable of hover before I go and employ any of these uh, techniques, because look at this one down here. I'm hiding content until you hover. So I've put a media query in the CSS that is conditional of hiding these uh, only if the device can hover. So anyway, kind of cool you know, little notes that uh, I thought were neat in here to keep this sort of readable by default. And then we upgrade it into this fun, you know, whimsical experience only if it's if it's OK. So let's go check out the HTML and kind of uncover how a lot of this is working. OK, well, the sections here are just to center the text that's in here and to be scroll snap points. But let's check out the HTML. Now, the HTML has these attributes and values. We have split by letter and letter animation breathe. And the way that these are split up in my project here is that the split by is a JavaScript hook that's going to look at all the elements that want to be split by. And then you tell the JavaScript how you want it to be split. So we have split by letter, split by letter. These are our two split by letter examples, right? So here's the other letter example here that we're looking at. And notice it says letter animation hover, and I get a hover animation on each letter. So that's all coming from CSS. The letter animation is the CSS hook, and you tell it what kind you want. And the JavaScript hook is how do you want it to be split? And here's split by word, split by word. And if I come down here, and these are the ones that are split by word. So in JavaScript, yes, we're going to start with JavaScript today. I have in my index.js file, I've imported two functions that I've created here in splitting.js. This is just a little exported functions area. I'm looking to see if the motion preference is set to true or false uh, via JavaScript here. We've talked about this. And then if motion is OK, I'm going to go ahead and find all those split targets by looking at the presence of that attribute is there. Do they want to be split by something? And if they do, we're going to go through each of those elements. But let's look at splitting JS first to see what functions are doing in here. We have split by letter and split by word. Split by letter takes text. It spreads the text into an array. So it's going to be each letter. Then it maps each of those letters to a span. Same thing with by word. We're going to grab, uh, we're going to get past some text. Or we're going to split it on space. That's going to give us an array of words. And then we're going to map each word to a span. All right, well, what does span do? Span takes a text uh, string and an index. It's going to create a span element, put the text in the text area. And it's going to set the property based on that index so that we can use that to stagger and it's return the node. And we're pretty much ready to go manipulate the DOM. Let's go manipulate the DOM for each of these elements that want to be split. So for each item that wants to be split, how does it want to be split? We store the type right here. We get the attribute split by. And we're going to create a little empty variable for some nodes. If the type wants to be split by letter, we call our by letter function. We pass it the inner text of this current node, and we get back all the letters uh, as spans. If it's a word type, we're going to get back a bunch of word spans. And if we got some spans back, we're going to go into this current element that we're iterating on, go to its first child, and we're going to replace it with all the uh, you know all the nodes that we made. And whew, we've got words 
or letters in CSS marked with an index for us to reference and do some cool stuff with. Okay, so let's go check out in the browser what some of that looks like with the dev tools. And I think that's just a fun place to show you how these are working. Command Shift C, I love that hotkey. Find the element that I want. Okay, let's do some inspecting. We've got an animation being applied here. Hey, look, it says prefers reduced motion, no preference, letter animation breathe for each child span. Okay, so for each of these child spans, they're getting this animation called breathe over 1200 milliseconds with a nice easing function. Here's that easing function visualized. You can change these here in DevTools too. And this is our calculation, which does our delay, and we're going infinite and alternate. Okay, I want to also check this out in the animations panel. This is just a cool tool. So if I reload, it's going to find all those keyframe animations. I can select it here and grab this playhead. Look at this, and I can drive the animation at the speed that I want and sort of inspect it. And look, it's even named here. Look, they're called breathe. So these are all the animations that have breathe. They're offset all the way down to, look, the last one plays at about a second and a half. Right, kind of cool that I can inspect that. And here's another animation that's playing down here called trampoline. I think that's these ones. So if I scrub this, I should see it. Yeah, there's the trampoline. Boing, 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 boing. I mean, that's kind of why I named it that, even though I ended up with an animation that was like much slower. So here I can click this and play it. Much more floaty, like they're sort of really lightweight. But okay, anyway, so we're looking at animated letters. Uh, this is a really cool view, and I just like checking it out. And let's let's go look at the CSS for kind of how I created this. Let's let's go there next. And we've done this before, right? We've stashed our preference um, query into a little custom media variable. Super cool. And here is the letter animation selector. So this is sort of a way I'm doing in post CSS. It, it kind of allows me to, I know this looks like a custom element selector, but I'm using it down here um, as an attribute. So I'm wrapping it in brackets with nest. And it's a little tricky, but it allowed me to centralize all this stuff. And I liked how it read. So I'm basically like in this attribute namespace called letter animation, as long as motion is okay, find each of those children and set them to display inline block and give them white space break spaces. So this is like that space between animated le uh, letters here that's consuming space space because of this white space style. And we're now going to look at breathe. So how is breathe working? So if the attribute is matching breathe, we're going to set a glow color to white. And if it's a custom color scheme, or if the user prefers light, we're going to set the glow color to black. But that's kind of besides the point. We're looking at each span got that animation called breathe. Now, this is the same code that we looked at before. But let's go look at the keyframes. Here's the keyframes for breathe. We are going from animation timing function ease out. Did you know that you can change your animation timing functions in keyframes? Totally. And I think it made for a really nice breathing effect. It was very natural looking. All right. So then we're going to. So we're going from pretty much all the default positions and default transitions and opacities and all that sort of stuff. And we're going to somewhere interesting. Um, and if we remember, our animation was alternating. So we're going to kind of bounce back and forth between these. We're going to go to scale 1.25. So that's like up 25%. We're going to go translate Y negative five pixels. That's like moving up just a little bit as it's scaling up. And that's what gives us sort of this like stationary looking scale. I don't know. I thought it looked really cool. And then perspective one pixel is so that those text animations don't jiggle. There's this kind of issue where if the text isn't um, in a very specific and custom perspective, it can shift in between them. I don't know how to explain it exactly, but this essentially sets it in place um, very meticulously and all the browsers go, oh, well then I'll just keep this text smooth. I also set a text shadow on here and that glow is going in and out. So we're growing and shrinking in that in that text shadow and it gives it this glow uh, type of effect. And then there's that animation timing function. So we can see that in the example here for animated letters, we've set uh, some keyframes and then each of these children are using the keyframes with just a different delay. All right, we have one more example I wanna go over and that's this hover me letters one. If you want to learn more about these, go check out the blog post. There's always like more explanation and deeper dives into all this stuff in there. Okay, so let's look at Hover Me. Hover Me has this cool effect where like when I go into the element, uh, it pushes all of them back. And then the one that I hover on comes forward. Let's go see how I did that in CSS. We have a hover. So this is hovering on the parent element for each of those children. If the hover is happening, we're going to scale them down, right? Okay, so that's why when we're hovering on the element itself, we target each child and scale them down still applying that perspective trick. It's about down 25%. Then for each child, 
we're going to make sure the transition is available on a transform. So if the transform changes, we want to interpolate over 0.3 seconds with an easing function. We're going to set the cursor to pointer, right? This is for just each child of this animation. And we're going to set the will change to transform. And that's again, so we're just like making sure that this is ready to shift through user interaction and sort of like keep that in memory browser. Um, don't make it as like high quality as normal rendered text. We're going to be animating this, so be prepared. And then it says here, if we're hovering on a span specifically, then the transform Form scale of that is up at 1.25 with again the perspective of one. So it's kind of cool as so we're hovering on the parent, we set a, a down scale of on all of them, but if one of them is hovered, it's scaled up. And that whole effect is just contained right here in this little nesting selector, and it gives us just this really cool effect. I thought this turned out really nice. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of GUI Challenges. There was a lot of like potential here, and I hope you're just sort of seeing that this is a, a Kickstarter into something much more uh, dramatic that you could do. There's like so much potential. And tell me how you enhance it. What other sort of splitting JS functions do you want to write? Um, tell me. I'm interested, and I look forward to all your comments. Take it easy, y'all. See ya.